Hi Kevin, how are you? Bueno, tenemos al siguiente ponente, es Kevin Gerbach, analista tecnológico, profesor de escuelas de negocios y experto en política. Puede presumir de ser una de las personas que más gamificadores ha preparado en el mundo a través de su MOOC en Coursera y en la Universidad de Pensilvania. Eh, hoy está aquí desde Estados Unidos para darnos las claves de cómo aplicar la gamificación a los procesos de aprendizaje. Un fuerte aplauso para Kevin. Thank you. Great, thank you very much for having me. I know many of you here have taken my Coursera online course on gamification, and you're probably excited to find out that, yes, I actually do have legs. <laughs> you saw me sitting behind a desk there. Right. So, the, uh, the challenge that I have here is I put everything that I knew about gamification into that course, so I thought what I would talk to you about is the overall project the opportunity for gamification to help transform education. Education is a $4 trillion global market. The e-learning part of it is growing 23%, compounded annual growth rate. The corporate learning and training part of it, which is the part where it's easiest to see the application of gamification, that's uh, this little gray part here, 8%, that's a $300 billion a year market. And most of it's awful. Most of it is terrible, uh, and it needs to get better. And as big as these numbers are, they actually understate the opportunity. Because one of the things that we've learned with MOOCs is that there is far more demand for learning than we have in the traditional educational system. 80% of the people who take MOOCs, massive online courses, are not students. They're people who want access to knowledge and learning for their work uh, or for other purposes, and it's demand that is not being served and cannot be served by the traditional educational system. In a world that's transforming as quickly as this one is, what you learn in school, in university, cannot possibly be everything that you need to know for your career. We are all learners, and we're all teachers. And we all have a responsibility to see what we can do to improve the quality of those learning experiences. All right, so where do games come into play? Uh, three things quickly that we know about games that are relevant to education. The first one is that we have 35 years of research on games as tools for learning and motivation in education. We have entire fields studying games and learning and showing how video games, even commercial video games, can tie into uh, motivating people, engaging them, educating them in all sorts of ways. The second thing that we know is that the basic mechanism of games, what makes games fun, what makes games engaging, is learning. Here's the famous quote uh, from Raf Koster in his great book, A Theory of Fun. In games, learning is the drug. What engages us in games is problem solving, pattern recognition, novelty. It's all about learning. The third thing that we know is that education, school, it's already a game. We have points, we have awards, we keep score, but it's a terrible game. It's not typically designed in the way a game designer would design things. We don't focus on feedback. We don't have clear win states. We don't talk about different player types, different kinds of people uh, and what they need to learn at that moment. We don't think about balance and all the sorts of things that a good game designer would think about in designing a game. So how can gamification help? Three ways I'd like to share with you. Motivation, effectiveness, and credentials. The first one is where we've seen most of the activity using gamification to improve motivation and engagement in learning. So I put up here uh, Khan Academy. I could use hundreds and hundreds of different examples. Uh, systems that use typically points and badges and so forth, uh, achievements, levels, uh, to make the learning experience more game-like, to bring people into the experience and pull them through the learning experience um, using some of the basic kinds of techniques that we see in games. Um, very powerful very valuable, can be done well or poorly, but something we're only going to see more of across all forms of education. One of the things you have to realize in education is just how big it is. There are 130,000 schools, kindergarten through 12th grade, pre-university schools, just in the United States. And so there are thousands and thousands of teachers in those schools, 
as well as elsewhere, using these mechanisms that you never hear about because it's a drop in the bucket compared to the overall opportunity. And I'm sure that's true in other places, countries like Spain and Europe and elsewhere as well. Um, the opportunity is vast, and we need to expand the use of these techniques to motivate people. But that's not all we have to do. Motivation alone isn't enough. We need to actually improve the quality of learning. These are some pictures from my students at Wharton, the business school where I teach, in my gamification course. And people sometimes say to me, well, how can you give away your course on Coursera? How can you give it away for free to hundreds of thousands of people when your school charges a huge amount of money to go to school there, to take the courses from you? What I say is, the MOOC is what these students get for homework. It's what they do before they go to class. What we do in class is we build games. We analyze games. We do projects. Uh, we do challenges. I do interactive sessions with them. We target things to students' personal interests and skill sets. Uh, we work on things like facilitating creative thinking, problem solving, critical thinking, how you actually build knowledge, motivating people, getting them there, getting the, the butts in seats, uh, as we say colloquially, essential, but not sufficient. So we need to think about how games can deepen and enhance the quality of the learning. Uh, and the third thing that we need to do uh, is credentials. So you go to school, you go to university, you come out with a diploma. Uh, but it doesn't tell you very much. It just says that you went through this program and you passed. Well, with game-like reward systems and credentialing systems, uh, primarily badges, we can do much better than that. So there's a great deal of work going on. The Open Badges project at Mozilla is probably the most sophisticated effort, um, but there's a lot that's just getting started. To think about new kinds of gamified credential mechanisms for all forms of education, all levels, formal and informal. What this lets us do is provide much more transparency about what students are actually learning and what they're actually achieving. It allows for much more granularity, not just saying that you passed a program and you graduated, but we can go much more detailed about what are the skills that you learned, what's the knowledge that you got, what's the personal path that you followed through. Um, and we can not just have one diploma, we can have lots and lots of different credentials that different people get within the same program because different credentials are relevant in different contexts. One employer or one uh, uh, context might want a certain set of credentials, another might want a different kind. There's no reason we have to be limited. We can do all of them. We can also uh, recognize achievement in different ways. I put here PVE, PVP, that's what we talk about in massive online games, player versus environment. Objective measurements, um, how well you do in terms of mastery versus some static target, that's important. Uh, PVP, player versus player, how well you do versus everyone else in the class. Also important, but different. Relates to different kinds of student motivations, a different kind of achievement, and we can reflect both of them uh, in these badge systems. So we need to be a lot more sophisticated uh, and have mechanism to recognize the outputs of all these forms of education in different ways than we have traditionally. Um, so in doing that, we need to learn from game designers. And there's a whole range of things that we can learn from game design. I just put up a few examples here of some of the kinds of things that I thought about in designing the Coursera gamification course and that I think about in my own teaching. Feedback, utterly essential in games. In many ways, feedback is the fundamental thing that makes good games effective. And feedback can be delivered in lots of ways, but for it to be effective in a game, it needs to be frequent. You can't just say, you know, you go through the game, you run around, and then at the end, you get a printout saying, uh, congratulations, here was your score. No, you need to see it in real time, see how you're doing, and it needs to be actionable. It needs to allow you to change what you're doing. We have nothing like that in traditional education. We just have tests. Uh, secure opportunities to experiment and to fail. Games get people to experiment because you know if you die, uh, then you get another life. We need to create those same kinds of mechanisms and opportunities in education. Because learning is not just about rote memorization. Um, it's about students stretching beyond themselves. Um, uh, this is uh, something that goes back to educational theory, um, and students can stretch to a certain point, and the challenge of the educator is to help them get to that point. Onboarding and scaffolding. Good games pull you into the game. The game teaches you how to play the game. Um, and in education, we just start with unit one. 
Uh, and this is something I thought a lot about in my course. I spent a lot of time and effort on the very first few videos and the first few things in the class to get people engaged. Uh, level design. You go to any major games company, there are people whose title says level designer. It's a chapter in pretty much every major game design book. What's the equivalent of level design in education? We don't think about it. Uh, but it's important to creating an overall experience. Frequent small wins and periodic epic wins. We've heard about this in a few of the earlier talks. You need to get that constant feedback and that, that constant uh, sense of achievement. You're doing something good a little bit, but you also need a sense that there's something bigger out there. There's something that you're shooting for, and ultimately you get to that epic win, that achievement that makes you feel really good about what you've accomplished. Uh, again, that's very different from a traditional structure that says you do a bunch of things and then you get a test. Um, not the same. Uh, we need to think about how to use user data to understand what's going on in the class to improve the course, to create that feedback loop, use analytics uh, in ways that online games have become very good at today should absolutely apply to education and not just to online education. I'm not just talking about e-learning. I'm not just talking about um, the, the kinds of things that you might think about. I'm talking about all learning can apply these kinds of techniques. Um, we need to understand there are multiple kinds of users. We had Andre talking about different player types. There's various frameworks for player types. Game designers think about different player types. When I did my Coursera gamification course, I thought about how to put something in there that would motivate different kinds of people. People who want to explore to push the boundaries, well, create the greatest gamification wiki on the web. It goes beyond the course. Um, people who want achievements, well, we've got things for that. People who want social, we've got uh, peer learning groups, and we've got discussion forums where people can interact. Different ways to serve different kinds of learners in the same course. I call it polyphonic learning. Uh, curiosity, puzzle, surprise, wonder. We don't think about this enough in education. We don't think about it enough in gamification in general. It's not just about rewards. That can be valuable. Points and badges and so forth can be useful. But ultimately, we want people to have a sense of wonder. And we can do that, uh, but we need to shoot for it. Uh, narrative. What good game designers do is tie together these small individual parts of the game to a larger whole. That's what narrative does. And again, in education, we typically think about just a unit of knowledge, another unit of knowledge, not weaving it together into a narrative. And finally, it's the experience, stupid. My course had about 65 five to 10 minute videos. My goal was to have every single five minutes be engaging because every five minute video was an opportunity for someone to drop out, to lose interest, um, to not maximize their potential as a learner. We need to constantly focus on the student experience. It's not that hard. The challenge is starting to think in that way, which traditionally in education we don't. So there were a lot of things that I did in my Coursera class. Just one to share with you. If you took the class, you know that there was a virtual scavenger hunt. There were bookshelves behind me. And in every video, again, there were about 60 videos, something changed. Different things moved around from video to video. And I said, well, there's a secret message. Go find it. Curiosity, puzzle solving, wonder not as a substitute for the content and the learning, but in addition to it. A, a way for people to engage with the class above and beyond the traditional kinds of things that we do in education. I've gotten tons and tons of feedback from people, including very experienced educators, e-learning experts, people from the MOOCs themselves saying, wow, what an amazing idea. And I think this is trivial. It's about the simplest thing you can imagine. No technology at all. There, All I had to do was like move some boxes around on the things behind me. Very, very simple. This can't be the best we can do. So here's my challenge for all of you here in the gamification field. Help us transform education. It's essential. It's incredibly important to our future. Uh, but to all of us in our careers as well. Because if you don't do it, it's going to be left to the professors and the MBAs, the people that I teach. And let me assure you, you don't want that. <laughs> so please help us. <laughs> and the final thing that I have to add, the conference organizers have done an extraordinary job here. They deserve a lot of credit.
But there have to be more women on stage next year. Mm -hmm. It's not just an issue of this conference. It's very hard. This is not good enough. And it's not going to change. There's tremendous gender inequality in technology. It's not going to change unless all of us demand that it does. Thank you. Uh, now time for some questions to Kevin. One here, one there, and another there. Están para allá. Simple one. Uh, you just mentioned let's uh, help uh, you change education uh, as in any game. What's the first step? Uh, find some opportunity that's local to you. Find either uh, some place that you're involved with, some place that you're an alumnus of, some place that you can work with. And again, it can be in the workplace. It can be your own corporate training program. Uh, but look at uh, how you can apply that knowledge. Um, I'm trying to do it in, in lots of places around in my own community. It's, it's a lot of little uh, things that go to make a big thing. Había otra pregunta por aquí adelante. Um, have you seen different cultural, we've talked a lot about cultural differences and our approach, different approaches uh, to gamification and for Europeans, it's very important because we don't have a homogeneous culture. Um, have you seen in your course as a professor, mm -hmm. uh, students behaving differently depending on what cultures they were from? Mm -hmm. It's a very good question. And it's not just a question for education. It's a question for gamification in the workplace. So the short answer is yes, of course, right? I mean, people, so 65 to 68% of the people in my course were not American. 160 different countries I had people from. So uh, there's lots of variation. Um, you don't see it entirely because I just see what's on the discussion boards and what people are doing in the class. But yeah, you hear anecdotally um, people's expectations about education are different. Um, their expectations about relationships with a professor, with fellow students are different. Um, so absolutely. Um, and I don't want to belittle those cultural differences, but the, the need for learning is there everywhere. Um, and uh, when we unpack and look at it, uh, I mean, to, to oversimplify, there are some educational traditions that are very focused on rote learning. Um, and uh, in some cases, they get very good results by the traditional tests. So that shouldn't be belittled. Um, but those uh, cultures could use a little dose of creativity. You go to places like China, they're studying the educational system of America because they want entrepreneurs, they want creativity. Uh, you go to America, we're sending people to uh, Shanghai to understand what they're doing because their test scores are better than ours. So uh, one of the great things about MOOCs is we actually have this opportunity to put people together. And I think we can do a lot more in learning from each other. One yeah. more question here. Kevin. Um, I've done a lot of lot in the games industry, and um, the kind of picture of games design that you seem to rely on in your um, slides uh, seems very much the kind of thing that people write about in books, but don't actually do in the industry itself. Do you think you're perhaps being a bit over reliant on kind of um, post rationalized theories of game design rather than actually how it works? Mm -hmm. It's a fair question. My experience in talking to game designers, uh, first of all, I'm talking about you know, good, effective principles of game design. There's a lot of game design in practice. That's just people stamping out widgets and people you know, trying to build the next great thing. Um, but the conversations that I've had with a lot of game designers when we talk about these concepts is they often say, you know, that's, that's familiar to me. We, we sort of have this rule of thumb that we use that this works. I don't know why it works. It's just we've done it a bunch of times and it works. And I say, well, oh, yeah, are you I'm sure you're aware about this uh, psychological principle, or surely you're aware about this. And they're like, oh, no, 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 we didn't get this from psychology, we just do it because it works. Um, so um, obviously I'm overgeneralizing about what all game designers do and talking about drawing some lessons out of it as opposed to trying to purely be descriptive about the practice of game design. Um, but I think there's a lot of lessons that can be learned that even game designers themselves don't necessarily process in the same way. Eh, vamos con poco tiempo, pero vamos a dar tiempo a dos preguntas más. One more question here. Yeah, uh, Kevin, um, just wanted to ask you, around gamification and MOOCs and education and training, and mostly around cre credentialing, um, there is some development around credentialing using gamification. 
and I think that that's tremendous, but from a, a higher education perspective, is that an opportunity, is it a threat, or is it a bit of both? <laughs> so obviously the answer is both. Um, uh, higher education in the U.S. and around the world is going to go through tremendous upheaval. The, the fundamental business model doesn't really work. Um, and uh, the effects, though, are not going to be felt the same way. So I have the good fortune of teaching at the number one ranked business school in the world by some metrics. We're doing fine. We, we're getting more applicants than we've ever had. Um, but you go a little bit down, even in the United States, to some really good schools, and they're hurting. Um, they're, they're having tremendous uh, financial pressure from, from budgets being cut and pressure from people not being able to get jobs and enrollments and applications going down. So, um, yes, there is a need for change. Um, and these alternate credentialing mechanisms are part of the challenge. They're part of the threat because we no longer have a monopoly on that stamp on the diploma. Ultimately, I think that's a good thing uh, because it forces us to have to say, well, what do we really do that's useful? People pay 60,000 US dollars a year to go to my university. What are we giving them? If we're not giving them more than $60,000 a year of value, we shouldn't be doing it. Now, I think we give them far more than that, uh, but we need to focus and hone in on that. So I, I think it's a challenge, and it's more of a challenge to some parts of education, um, but we need to think about it as an opportunity to figure out what role that we play in this larger, more complex environment. And the very, very last question here. Um, Kevin? Yes. Uh, first, thank you for the talk and especially for the course on Coursera. I think it's probably like the, one of the best resources on gamification out there today and probably responsible for a bunch of these people being here today. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, bringing back the gender question you just raised and expanding on a previous question. Um, if you could talk about uh, gender differences you could observe on your course, like in your massive amount of people you could teach, if you see, like first, the, if there's a different amount of, what's the ratio yeah. of men and women, and if you notice different profiles on the way they um, design game, gamification and how they behave as subjects of it? 70% mm -hmm. uh, men uh, in my class, I think that's relatively typical across the MOOCs, obviously there, there's some variation in subject matter. Uh, and the second one is a really great question, and I don't know. We've got this vast amount of data now from the MOOCs that we're just starting to analyze and just starting to say very, very preliminary research just about uh, engagement and completion levels. Um, so we have a long way to go. And I'm, I don't come out of the education research field, but I'm starting to get into this and look at this. So yeah, absolutely, those are good questions to ask. And it's, it's something with gamification as well, where, again, we've now got all this data. We've now got all this information online about what different kinds of people are doing at every stage. Now, we need to be careful about privacy and how we manage that data and how we use it, uh, but we need to see that as an opportunity too. So I, I don't have a good answer from you, uh, for you on, on gender differences or even on, on uh, differences between countries and so forth, um, but those answers are out there and we need to find them. Well, we, we have no more time for more right. questions, but thank you very much yes, for coming you. to Barcelona yes. and it's been a pleasure. Thank you.